I'm Katrina, the owner of Kathim Creations Reefs and Things. The, the at home, the home reef. This was one of the three reefs that I gave you guys to choose from for me to make. It was the everyday reef, which is this one here, which we did. And this is how this turned out. It turned out beautifully. Really love how it turned out. We had two more choices, choices to choose from, and one was an elf reef, and then the other one was the fall reef. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do the elf reef. Let's do this one today. We'll hold the fall reef off for another day. So we're gonna do the, the elf reef today, and we're gonna use this small elf, uh, sign we're going to use this type of deco mesh poly deco mesh it's got the kind of lime green stripes with the red stripes and it's on the natural jute background we're going to use a 12 inch uh reform so this is a 12 inch reform i get all of my 12 inch reforms i get these from walmart i don't bother to even order them I just go into Walmart and I get them from there. They normally have them most of the time. So I think I got my uh, Poly Deco mesh from Craft Outlet. Also, you want to need some white. Um, this is high foil. I don't know if you can tell. It's really high foil uh, Poly Deco mesh as well. <clears throat> You're going to need some ribbons. And these are the ribbons that I chose. You got the plaid one here. You have the one that have the candy canes, some candy in it. You got some snowflakes on this one, red and green snowflakes. And then this one actually has an elf on it with some candy canes and stuff, some fun stuff on this ribbon. So these are the ribbons that I chose. This one over here. I also have some picks. Some picks that um I may put in there, haven't decided yet. We'll look at it at the end and we'll decide there at the end um, whether I want to use the picks or not. Hold on one second. Okay. And here goes some picks here. Some little candy canes. And then this is like the little lollipops. Um, we have some of these that we could stick in. I don't know if we want to do it or not. I, I just have them here. This is also some snowflakes because if you look at the sign, Look at the sign that we have here. Look at it closely. You'll see some candy canes. You'll see some candy, um, like candy like this, like these on on the sign here. And you'll see some candy canes. So that's how I picked the snowflakes, candy canes, and some candy pieces. So that's how I picked the little picks to go with the sign. You also gonna need your rotary cutter. You gonna need your scissors. You gonna need your glue gun. You know I love this glue gun. You're going to need some, of course, some Chanel stems. Because I have them up here. You're going to need your Chanel stems or pipe cleaners, whatever you call them. Um, on the, and, I'll, and I'll get started. I think that's about it. Chanel stem pipe cleaners. And when we make a bow, we'll need our easy bow maker and a zip tie. But we'll get to that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to face you guys down so you guys can start seeing what I'm doing, okay? All right, let's get started. Come on, guys. I'm trying to get a good view for you guys, okay? I'll put this here. Now, how I put my Chanel stems on my... Uh, work form. This is how I do it. I twist it with the two bars here. I twist it on the two bars once or twice and then I lay it down and I go over to the where this ends at is where I lay my next Chanel stem. I twist it there. I lay this and where this ends is where my next Chanel stem lays. Do the same thing, and that's where my next Chanel stem go. I, I've done it the way I've seen some people do it, where they just go in between, you know, each bracket. 
and then in between the, that bracket sometimes to me my reef comes out real thin looking maybe it's just me i don't know but i don't like to sell reefs like that if you're going to pay a price for my reefs i want to make sure you get good quality stuff and to me it just looked real thin when i do it that way so i just don't i rather put do it like this and then when i do it like this i make sure it's nice and full so that's how i do it when i put my reef so when i did that i came up with 13 zip ties okay so you got you got seven on the outside if i'm not mistaken one, two, three four five six seven and then you got one two three four five six on the inside okay so that's how you have it so you can do it like this or you can do it like another designer however you like to do it remember this is your art you do it the way you feel um so if the other way that they did where you put a chanel stem on each one of the connecting bars here and then you put a chanel stem up here at the in the middle only in the middle and that's enough for you it looks full enough for you then hey you do it the way you want to do it okay it's totally up to you totally up to you but that's how i did it so since there's 13 since there's search since there are 13 chanel stems up here since there are 13 chanel stems you had to cut 13 of your poly burlap mesh so I cut 13 of the natural with the green and red stripe, and then I cut 13 of the white foil. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I was a little bit mm, kind of unsure of exactly how I wanted to do this reef. I don't know, I, didn't, I was debating whether I wanted to do poofs or ruffles or cruffles or fold over ruffles. But what I figured is I will try this way. I will do ruffles on the bottom ruffles on the bottom i'm sorry somebody keep trying to call me i don't know why um but ruffles on the bottom and then fold over ruffles on the top y'all know what that is fold over ruffles i i've done that with you guys before so we're going to do it again today so let's get started okay when you guys check in say hi let me know who you are let me know where you checking in from let me know if you do reefs How's everything going with your reefs? Is it a business for you? Is it not a business for you? What kind of reefs you make? So this is how we want to do our, our cruffles today. What we're going to do is we're going to just do one roll on the end. just to And then we're going to do another roll on this end. Now I'm going to get my little trusty dusty clip here for this end. And then I'm going to roll it just once or twice just to tuck in those little frayed ends and then I'm just going to cruffle it to me right and there you go and then you any available Chanel stem whichever one you want to choose that's where you lay it at right you push it down and you twist your Chanel stem once or twice on the top and we're going to do this all the way around all the way around so you just tuck it in once or twice just tuck it in you do it on this end and then you just do the crumple that's how you do it and then you stick it in your next available chanel step and just know if you do if you do a method and it doesn't look right remember this is not glued in it's not permanent you can always take it out and change it it's not a big deal Remember, I say it all the time. This is not rocket science. It's your art. You can change it at any time. How have you guys' week been going this week? Mine is going okay. Today's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. You know, that's always good. Time to start the weekend. I got to work one of the days of the weekend. But hey, still the weekend. Still the weekend find the open zip tie put this down in there I gotta go shopping for wedding uh, going to a wedding next weekend and I don't have a dress for it Oof. any of you ladies been in that bad position Oof. 
Gotta find something to wear for the wedding. Oh my goodness. When in my closet can't fit nothing. So I'm like, oh man. Now I gotta go out and buy something. Not complaining about going out and buy something. It's just the whole process of trying to find something for this wedding. Because ladies, you know how we do. Gotta have, you get the dress, you gotta have the shoes, gotta have a bag. Gotta have the jewelry to match. So you gotta have all the good stuff. So it ain't just buying a dress. It's a whole process. Tucking in those ends, curling in those ends, and you're just walking the mesh up to you. That's all. That's all. I made a wreath like this once before, and it came out really, really good. The little elf uh, sign is so cute. And it's so playful, so you can do just about anything with it. Put anything with it. It's really easy to work with. Oh, and I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. I cut these to 20 inches long. So, uh, 13 cuts at 20 inches long. I did the white and the neutral with the uh, green and red stripes. Deco mesh. I went to Michael's the other day and found some really, really nice picks. So I picked some of those up. I also went to uh, Hobby Lobby and found some picks there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, Hobby Lobby has all of their full stuff on 40% off. So they finally got it 40% off. So you can go and check them out because for a while, they didn't have 40% off. They were teasing us, putting it on the shelf wasn't selling it for 40% off so we were being teased all right so that was that's the outside now we're gonna go to the inside so just fold these over a little bit so we can get to the inside start the inside same thing tuck in those ends roll it under Walk your mesh to yourself. All right, I'm gonna push that down. I'm gonna give it a good twist. Hey, Maria, thank you for checking in with me, girl. Thank you, thank you. tuck these ends in and we're going to walk this mesh up. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the next available Chanel stem. And this is what I call like the base. You want to put your base down. And I use white as the base because if you look here in the sign, the dominant color in the sign is green. So I don't want the base to be green because I want my sign to pop. So when you put the sign up against this white, you see how it see how it pops? And also when you do the neutral, it'll pop against it as well. So you don't want to have the color in your sign to be all over your reef where when you put your sign up there, it just disappears. At least not in my opinion now. If that's what you want to do, like I said, this is your art. You can do it any which way you want to. Tucking in those ends, giving it a one-two twist. And just bringing the mesh to you. I know the stores is not really, is it, is it just me here in Georgia where um, the stores are not really ready for Christmas yet? Like, 
Walmart doesn't have it out. The only store that really has Christmas stuff out is uh, Hobby Lobby. I went into Michael's and Michael's don't even have any Christmas stuff out. I mean, they have, and, and then the fall stuff is very select as well. So I'm, I'm not sure. Is it, is it just me here in Georgia? Or is that, is that all over? You grab this. Help me out. Let me know. Is it just, just here? I know some of you guys also, your Sam's Club have gotten their, their winter ribbons in, but not here in Georgia. I go every week to look to see if they have them, and they don't have them yet. So let me know. Let me know who you are, where you checking in from, and let me know, hey, if your stores got uh, received their Christmas stuff and have them out on the shelves yet. Because I know here in Georgia, they're not on the shelves yet. The only place this is Hobby Lobby. I'm going to go to Joann's this weekend and see. I know last weekend I didn't really see anything. But I'm going to go to jo Joanne's this week. This weekend in Joanne's. We got two more to go with the white. the last one in the white. <clears throat> My husband invited me out tonight and I was like, oh no, I gotta go downstairs to make some rapes. I can't be hanging out. I gotta get my business going. Anybody else out there craft this like this? You know, I know. Listen, the holidays is coming. I don't have no time. I gotta get in here and get these reefs made. I've already had some uh, customer of mine contact me about making her a reef, so I gotta get some of these custom order reefs out. Definitely gotta get that done. All right, now we have our base. This is our base. Okay, you're gonna have fraying, you take your scissors and you when you're still really messing around with your mesh. You got another layer to put on the top of it. So this is how I look so far. So you, it's a little thin, you see a little thin, but we about to add that second, that second layer. So this is how we're gonna do the second layer. Remember, these are cut at 20 inches, so I cut all of my poly deco mesh at 20 inches long, okay? It's a 10 inch uh, mesh, and if they cut at 20 inches long. We're going to do the fold over ruffle method. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to flip it over. We're going to lay it to the middle, bring, bring one end to the middle. We're going to bring the other end, maybe an inch over that end. You see that? That's how you want to see. It's like an inch over it. You flip it over, you hold it down, and then you just find the middle. And then this mesh, whenever you have the mesh to have the stripes, you can find the stripe in the middle, and it helps you walk it right on up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the ruffle right up the middle of this. And this is what you call the fold over ruffle method. Okay. We first put them down, up and down, right? We lay them this way. When we put the cropples in, I mean the, the fold over ruffles, we're gonna put them this way. So we're gonna lay it across it so it's not laying the same direction. It's gonna have more coverage that way. And we're gonna get a chance to see a lot of the white pop as well. So we go ahead, let me put this down on our first one. Oh, 
on. We move on to the next one. Guys, let me know if this view is good for you guys. I got to make sure you guys can see well. I think you can, but just let me know because my phone keeps saying it's getting interrupted. I'm not sure what's going on, but my laptop is saying it's still going. So let me know. So we did the fold over. We flip it over. We find the center. We still hold it down because it wants to come apart on you and you just walk the mesh up and you make that little bow tie or ruffle, whatever you want to call it. There you go right there. You keep the seam to the bottom because you want that to be unseen. Go to the next inner one and you just place it down and make sure you go the opposite direction. Then the, fir the first one is laying. So the first one is laying this way. You want to put it in this way. And I'm just working on the inside just because there's no rhyme or reason. I'm just working on the inside. So if you don't want to work on the inside, start on the inside first. You don't have to. You don't have to. Remember, this is all up to you. It's what you decide to do. Remember, these are cut at 20 inches long. And we're going to fold it over maybe an inch. Flip it over. I'm just going to turn it over on this way just because. And there you go. Find the next open spot. Make sure you want it to go across the opposite direction than the first one is laying. Get it in there you push it down and you give it a good twist and you just push it down because you just need it to lay down and no we you don't need to twist it more than once or twice because we're going to go in with some ribbon this beautiful ribbon remember we got this beautiful ribbon to put in there Fold it over. And we're gonna keep doing this all the way around the wreath. Got this one ready. Give it a good push down and a good twist. White is going to lay down a little bit, but you still can have it come out. Still want to see it. Go over to the next one. Get that one ready. Sometimes your Chanel stems want to hide. You gotta find them. So how's everybody doing today? Say hi when you check in. Let me know you're checking in. Let me know where you're checking in from. right down in there. Go to the next one. Get it ready. Hey Teresa, thanks for checking in. How are you doing today, Teresa? We're doing the fold over ruffle method. So get your mesh out, girl. Follow along. Down in it. Remember, make sure you go the opposite direction. Make sure we're covering. You know, tomorrow's Friday. I mean, come on. That's a beautiful thing. You made it most of the week. So 
tomorrow is Friday. So now this is what we have so far. Look at that. Now you see how full it's getting? And this is what you want. This is what you want right here. You want that fullness. Now if you can remember when we just had the white, it was looking a little bare. But once you add in that second layer, plus that we're doubling it over, the, the, the second layer we're doubling it, it's even making that this mesh even thicker to, to see through. So it's great coverage. It's a great way to have coverage on your, on your workflow. So we're going to go down to the outside form now. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure we lay it the opposite direction. We have it laying this way and we're going to go across this way. So we're going to do that fold over ruffle method. So make sure y'all paying attention. You want the curl side up. We're going to bring it over to the middle. Other end, just an inch over that first end. You're going to flip it over. You're going to find the middle which is this line, the green line, which helps out, of course, when you have mesh that has lines in them. Lines in them, this, of course, helps you keep it straight. So you just use the line. That'll work, right? That makes it easy. you press it down it, it gets a little tricky when you're trying to do it to the outside but you can get it done you can definitely get it done remember we want the cup side up bring it one end over to the middle bring this about an inch over flip it over find that middle and then you just crunch up that middle. You keep that that seam side down. You don't have to worry about the fraying so much. You go to your next available Chanel stem over here, and you just add it in. It's a little hidden. When you get it in there, you gotta press it down. Give it a good press down. Miss Teresa, have you made any reefs lately? I see you watching. What reefs have you made or have you made any lately? You fold it to the middle. And you bring this maybe an inch over that seam. Flip it over. And you just walk it up the middle. And we're going to continue to do this all the way around the reef. When you get it in there, you make sure you press it down so it gets all the way in there. It should look something like this when you get it down there. What, Teresa? You've been lazy. See how that looks like a blossom, like a bloom? That's, that's the effect that you want it to have when you push it down in there. You don't want it to be sitting all the way up in here. That's why when I said when you put it in there, you push it all the way down in the zip tie. And then you give it a good twist so you get this big pretty bloom. That's that's the effect that you want to see. Let's keep going. Come on, Teresa. You know you need to get your material and do it with me. Have this little bit over. And then you just walk it up the middle. Walk it up the middle. Tell you to tell you the truth, uh, I, I was not. I'm not really ready for Christmas. I'm not even going. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I went through some of my Christmas stuff today. I was like, oh, okay, I gotta gotta work on getting my Christmas materials. I didn't realize how much Christmas stuff I made last year. That I'm I'm a little scarce on my material. So that's why when I went out to the stores last weekend, hoping to get some more Christmas material, um, I was shocked that. The only person that the only store that had material was uh, Hobby Lobby. 
I'm shocked about that. I mean, Walmart ain't ready. Michael's ain't ready. Joanne's wasn't ready. I'm like, okay. You know, and Hobby Lobby got some stuff out. They got the Christmas balls, but they don't have all the picks and stuff like that. So, you know, I got to work with what I have here at the house. So, I want to get into Christmas, but I don't have all the material to really get down in there. So, once I get some more picks and stuff, because I have signs. That's not the problem. It's just the stuff to put on the wreath to make it look beautiful. So... I'm just waiting to get some more of that then I can work on doing some more Christmas with you guys but I have plenty of falls so you know that's gonna be my next three it's the fall one I uh, that was in the three um, wreath designs that I asked you guys to pick so the next wreath that I make is going to be the fall wreath but I want to show you guys I hope I don't forget so you guys remind me when it gets to the end of the video to show my reindeer wreath I love making these. So like my top seller. Okay. Did I not cut enough? Oh yeah, that's right. I wanted to cut one more which for you guys so you guys can see. Alright. So you want the curl side up? You want to lay it over, maybe an inch. Fold it over. Find the middle. Walk it in. And then I left one so I, so you guys can see me cut it. Okay? I just left one to be cut so I can show you guys. But just in case if you were wondering or you wanted to see me cut it, I will show you one of them. So next time I come on, I should be making... making that uh, fall wreath for you guys. That's what I'll be making next. Alright, so I'm going to cut one more of the mesh. I wanted to show you guys as I left one out so I can show you guys. You just roll out your mesh. You get your rotary cutter. I always find something. It could be anything. Another roll of ribbon, a, a staple or whatever to hold it down. And you want to go on your cutting mat. Make sure you always have a self, a self healing cutting mat. Okay, so you get yourself a healing cutting mat. Use your rotary cutter, and you cut it like that. That's simple. Now, if you don't have a rotary cutter, don't worry about it. Don't be like, well, Katrina, I can't do it because I don't have a rotary cutter. Yes, you can. Trusty dusty scissors work just the same, so don't worry about it. You can use your scissors. Okay. So if you don't have a rotary cutter, don't worry about it. Use your scissors. Let's get our wreath back up here. Once again, I'm going to bring one in into the middle. Bring the other end about an inch over overlap on that one. Find the middle and you walk your hands up. And you have your bow tie. You have your bow tie. You find that last Chanel stand. And you put it in. Good twist. These may want to turn on you, so you may have to just twist them around. The white ruffle at the bottom may want to turn on you, but that's okay. That's how it. That's how it does. Now look at that. Look at that. Look how full and pretty that is. That's beautiful. Right there. All right. So we have this, which is so pretty already. Just these colors with that little pop of white coming out, just shooting out. Now look look how it looks when you put the, the sign on it. Look at that. But the sign looks really, really small with this wreath because there's so much going on. But we're going to put a voluptuous bow up here. I haven't decided which type of bow yet. 
but we're going to do a voluptuous a big nice pretty bow okay so we're going to do that up here so the sign is here and we're going to do a nice pretty bow here all right so what we're going to do now we're going to go to our ribbons let's just do a recap this is a christmas wreath with an elf sign that we're doing today that's the elf sign it is on a 12 inch wired reframe that i got from walmart we use heavy foil in 20 inches long and we cut 13 of them because there's 13 pipe cleaners so we cut 13 pipe we have 13 pipe cleaners up here so we got 13 of the 20 inch poly deco mesh both colors in the white and the neutral with the red and green what we did with the white we did a regular cruffle which you roll the both ends and you cruffle them up and then on the top with the natural jute with the green and red we did a fold over ruffle method so you fold over the ends and then you ruffle up the middle and we put them in there so that's the recap on what we've done so far if you're just tuning in that's the recap so now which is my favorite part is putting the ribbon on so we're going to start in the middle work our way to the outside and i left I think I may have to cut uh, cut some. I think I left some to cut, so one or two to cut. So I'm gonna show you guys here. And this this right here was some, my ribbon was cut to 13 inches long, and the reason why I cut them at 13 inches is because I like to see my ribbon. So at 12 inches to me is. You, you see them but you don't see them that much 12 14 you see them too much they're hanging like all the way out here on the reef that's that's way too far out for me but the 13 gives it just enough curl over and you can actually see the design on the ribbon so i really love 13 13 to me is a sweet spot in cutting ribbon so these are all cut to 13 inches long and then i dovetail inches the ends so that's a dovetail i'll show you that way and how you dovetail them is you just fold your ribbon in and you cut on the angle. So you cut from the folded end to the open end. And when you do that, you get your dovetail. And I'll show you because I think I have to cut another two ribbons, not sure. So how I lay them is I lay them down on my mat and I try to have them as even as possible. See, they're, they're about the same length because they're both 13 inches so they should be about the same length and what I do is I fold them over and find the center so I even them up and it doesn't have to be exact but they're evened up you can see that it evened up so I, I creased it so I know where the middle is I open it up and then I pinch the middle and then I just take my hand and I kind of just go and make it where I'm getting this little wing effect. See how that is? I'm getting a little wing effect. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start placing them down in my reform. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on the outside first. So I'm gonna work on this bottom row first when I put my ribbon in. How do you guys like the ribbon? I think this ribbon is so pretty. And when you put it in, I'm just going to separate it a little bit. I'll show you guys real quick how I did that. So you see how that's separated? I got the stripe, the candy cane one, stripe, candy cane one. And I just pull it out towards the bottom. And you just do this all the way around. I alternate my ribbon. So next we're going to use this, this ribbon here. And this has got the snowflakes. And this is the one that's got the elf on it. So I place it on top. Get it lined up. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is art, not right. It's rocket science. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I do my little crease. I know where my center is. I open it up. And then I pinch in that center. 
I then take my ribbon and give it a nice little tug and get my little wings. As you can see, my little wings, and I just place it in. And I'm going to do this all the way around. Now, some would want to cut off their uh, their Chanel. And you can go ahead and give it a couple of twists and cut it off and then stick it back down and you're done. I'm not sure. Like I said, I, none of the stores had any really good embellishments. I have a few here. I'm not sure if I'm going to put them in right now until I can go to the store and buy some more and decide then. So... I'm not going to cut them off because I'm not sure what I want to do. And you're going to have to re-fluff your ribbon again. I'm just, I'm just placing them for now. Because when you put the ones on the top, you're going to push this down. So just know you're going to have to, you know, move around with them some more. So let's move to our next one. Let's go to our next one. Once again, these are cut at 13 inches. Find the center. Punch down on that center. And then you do your little, your little wings. Remember, we got 13 of these to do. I really love this. Look how that sparkles. See how that sparkles? I just think that is so pretty. That ribbon is so pretty. I'm hoping I have some more in my stash because I only have a little bit of that ribbon left. So I'm definitely going to have to find some more of that. I really like that. So what are you guys doing this weekend? You got plans for this weekend? I know I got to work this week. I got to work on Sunday. So I'm really not going to do too much. I'm going to try to find a dress for a wedding on Saturday. That's kind of it for me. And then Sunday I'll be working. Moving on to the next one. So what are you guys doing for the weekend? What do you guys think? Do you think embellishments are too much on a reef? Or do you think uh, embellishments is what make the reef itself? The, the bowl or embellishments? What do you think? Well, do embellishments make the reef or do bows make the reef? I know which one I like. guys are getting a good view of the ribbon as it's coming around it's really starting to see you're starting to be able to see it really good now right. this is our last one on the bottom 
Now we'll start working on the top. We have gotten the bottom done and we're going to move on up to the top side now. So we're going to move into the, so you see we've gotten the bottom done. The whole bottom row is done. So now we're going to start on the top. And we'll just lay them down. Line them up. them out. I always like to put that little crease at the bottom so I know where the middle is and then find my spot up top. I just like to separate them just a little. Too much too fussy with it. Okay, line them up. Find that center. Get your little bird wings, and then you just place it down in there. Now, if you don't want to do the little bird wing thing, you don't have to. I just like, I like how it looks and I like how it helps your, your ribbon lay when you put it in there. To me, it just helps it just a little bit. I already know it needs to curl when you do that. Oh, I have an announcement. That's what I meant to tell you guys. I have an announcement. I hope y'all listen. I have an announcement. I have an announcement. Are you listening? I will be at the River Fest September 25th and 26th. So if you want to come see my reefs in person, I will be there. And I will have most, like all of my fall and my Christmas reefs and some of my uh, other season reefs. So definitely if you wanna come pass by, if you wanna come say hello, please say hello. But with that being said, know that you guys can get a jump on the stuff that I'm gonna have. If you go to my Etsy and look now on my Etsy, you can see some of the things that I have now and you can purchase it now. Because if you wait to September 20. Etsy and purchase something that I've already made that you may have had your eye on but you waited to September to get it but if you just want to wait to September please come to the River Fest in September in Canton Georgia please come out come say hello even if you want to buy a read just come and say hello I will be there and I want you to come by and see my reefs and say hello. So just write down that day. Come on out to Canton, Georgia. The River Fest in Canton, Georgia on September 25th and 26th. Because I will be there with my reefs in person. And you can say hello and come and see my reefs in person. I hope you guys can make it. I'm really excited. I'm, I'm hoping it ain't extremely hot like it was today. Ooh. Ooh, it was hot today. Mm-mm-mm. It said the heat index was what, 103 or 104 or something? I'm hoping it ain't, it's not going to be like that in September. Lord, ooh, I'm going to be in trouble. That's way too hot for me. I don't know about you guys. You guys can take that heat? I don't know. I know I can. Ooh. 
I don't know if I can take that heat. Wait a minute, I think I skipped one. I think I skipped one. I sure did. I didn't got excited about the daggone river river fest. I skipped the skipped the Chanel, uh, 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 Chanel stuff. All right, let's go back here. Let's put it in. And this is what I mean when you make a mistake, ladies, and you could just go back in and fix it. Look how easy this is. I skipped one. Okay, take it back out and put it where it needs to be. No big problem. There you go. Nobody knows. I mean, you guys know. Yeah, because you're watching. Yeah. Okay, go to our next one. Line it up. camera. So you guys got to tell me. So I can pull it over so you guys can see it. Got to line it up. Remember my ribbon is cut 13 inches. 13 inches. And that's just a preference that I like because I like to be able to see my ribbon. I like my ribbon to have this fold over look. And I think that's just the right height when it has this little fold over look. Because it's not too much. It's just enough that I like. That you can see the ribbon. So you line it up. Find the center. You pinch it and you put it down. And I think we have to cut one more like I told you guys. Well, I think I cut them all. Uh, did I miss one? Nope, I think I must have cut them all. I was trying to save one for you. Let me just check too. Sometimes I I don't I don't count, right? All right. All right. Let me take a look at it. So I can take a look at it. So this is what we have so far. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? This is a 12 inch wire reform. Look how thick that is. See how thick that is? See how pretty that is from every direction? See how thick that is? On a 12 inch wire, don't think it's a small reef. Because this is a nice size reef. But this is a good size when you want to make a reef that goes on a double door. So when you have a double door, this is a perfect size. So get yourself some 12 inch wire reef forms if you have a double door and make your reefs on that form because it will look so nice on your door. Not unless you have very big doors and the bigger a wire reef forms will look great. But on a typical door, the 12 inch with this type of style of reef will look great on your door. It won't look overwhelming at all. But this is what we have. What do you guys think? You guys think this is great? I think it's beautiful. Thank you, Teresa. It's pretty. Yeah, I think it's pretty too. It's gorgeous. All right. Well, we're going to put the sign on. Let's, let me look at it and see where I want to put my sign at. Let's see where I want to put my sign at. Because I want my sign on the side. I'm thinking about, no, do I want it in the middle? What do you guys think? You think the side or the middle? Because if I do it in the middle, I may do two smaller bowls. So you think the side, down here on the side, what do you guys think? That's the side. That means the bow will be up here somewhere. Some big pretty bow right here. Or we can do the middle. And we can do like a small, smaller bow here and a smaller bow here. So what do you guys think? So you want the middle 
which is where he's at, where I will do a bow here and a bow here, or do you want it down on the side and I do a big, just one big pretty bow right here? What do you guys think? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe the middle. I haven't done a wreath that had two bows on it in a while. Hmm. So I think that may be where I'm going with it. In the middle. I think so. Go with it in the middle. And then I will put a bow here. And then I will put a nice bow here. And then I'll find embellishments as they come in and stick them in. I think that's what we're going to do. So let's, oh, just want to recap on how I attached my Chanel stems or pipe cleaners to my sign. You guys have seen me do it before, but let me just go through it real quick for the ones, the first time people watching. I staple my Chanel stems to the wood. And this one, I didn't have to worry about the staples going through because you see how thick this is. My staple wasn't going through all of this. So I really didn't have to worry about my staples going through. Because when you have to worry about your staples going through, you need to get some felt and you need to make it bigger in the back. That way it won't come through the front. So this time I didn't have to worry about that. So I just stapled one at the top, two at the bottom. And then I took my glue, as you can see, and I glued it down really, really well. All three of them, I glued it down really, really well. That's all you do. Now we're going to stick it in there going to place it and we're going to do it in the middle I don't know my Chanel stems are long enough because this is a it should be long enough though it should be long enough and when you first put it on don't put it down too tight just give it one, two twist until you find the right spot that you want it to be in. So, like I have it right here and I barely have a hold of it. And I'm just going to give it a twist just to hold it down. That's it. Then I'm going to take the one on the other side. One on the side. So I'm going to go down to the wire frame. You can go through the mesh or you can move the mesh out your way. It, it don't matter. It all depends on, you know, just depends on you. Like I said, this is your art. You make it the way you want to. Once again, you don't have to pull it down tight. Just give it a one, two twist on the bottom just to hold it for right now until you find your proper placement. So you make sure that Just picking up some of my mesh and going down to the wire frame. Right. Like I said, we're not going to pull it down, we're just going to. Just tie it down in there. And we're going to see if that's a good spot for it. Is that a good center spot? I'm going to hold it up to me so I can see it. See if that's the spot we want. And we always going to have to re-fluff our ribbon because we've moved stuff around. spot. I think we got it. I think we got it. What you think? What you guys think? I put it in the middle. I love that middle because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do me a nice bow here. Nice size bow here. Probably four or five inch loops and another four or five inch loop bow here at the top. So I'm going to do two bows. 
And then it's going to be embellishments on this side and embellishments on this side. And that's how this wreath is going to be. Okay? All right. That's gorgeous, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I'm, I hope you guys are really happy how this turned out. I'm not going to keep you guys any longer. I can do the bowl later. It's getting a little late for me. I have to uh, go upstairs and do some homework now because, yes, I am taking classes in college at the same time as I'm trying to turn my hobby into a business So and work full time. So, yes, I, I have to go and read over some stuff upstairs. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to turn in for the evening uh, to go upstairs. But I wanted you guys to see this. And when I come back on, hopefully tomorrow, I will show you guys the finished, well, almost finished because I don't, like I said, I don't have all the picks that I want to put on this um, Christmas wreath because it's some hearts let me know if you really like this if this is something that you really enjoyed I hope you did I really enjoyed it I love I love making Christmas wreaths and holiday wreaths I love making them so I'm so glad you guys joined me hopefully you can join me again I probably will be on tomorrow making that fall wreath with you guys I'll try to prep as much as I can that way I don't keep you guys on too long but until we meet again you know what I always say I want you guys to stay safe and don't forget I'm gonna be at Riverfest in Canton, Georgia, uh, uh, September 25th and 26th. So you can come see me and meet me in person and come see my reefs and you can see them in person uh, and see what you like. If you don't wait to then, make sure you go to KatheemCreations.com. Let me show it to you. KatheemCreations.com. Check out my website, my Etsy. Purchase anything that you see you like there. That way you'll beat the rush in September 25th and 26th. So you go over to Katheem Creation, see what you like, go ahead and purchase it. If you live local, when you go on my Etsy, you put in a local code and we can arrange for the reef to be dropped off to you. Not a problem. You will not pay shipping fees. So if you want, please go over to KatheemCreations.com, check out my website, go to my Etsy, check out and check out my So send me some hearts, some thumbs up. Let me know if you like it. Let me know what reef you want me to make next. I do want to make my fall uh, reef that I have down there. But hey, if you guys say, hey, Katrina, do some Christmas bowls. I'll do that for you. Not a problem. You guys just let me know. Okay? So definitely do that for me. If you're following on Facebook, please comment. If you're following on YouTube, please subscribe and share. And, and ring that bell. That, not that Click the bell so you can get notified when I'm going live. Okay? So if you follow, look at looking at uh, you look at my videos on YouTube, please subscribe and share and ring that notification bell. No, I'm also on Instagram and I'm also on TikTok. So if you follow me here on Facebook and Instagram, go over to your TikTok if you have TikTok, and make sure you follow and like me there on TikTok as well, because I always and I post different things on TikTok, not the same things. So because you know TikTok is a little different, so I try to do a little bit more fun correlations with my reefs on TikTok. So go over there and check that out. Make sure you like. And you follow me there over there. But until we see each other again, I want you guys to stay safe. Bye.